Hello and welcome to Sabbath School, brought to you by It Is Written. I'm Eric Flickinger, and this week we are starting a brand new quarter. We're going to be looking at the subject, Rest in Christ. Rest in Christ. And our special guests this quarter are the authors of the Sabbath School Quarterly, Dr. Gerald and Chantal Klingbeil. Chantal is the associate director of an associate director of the Ellen G. White Estate, and Gerald is an associate editor of Adventist Review Ministries and a research professor of Old Testament and Ancient Near Eastern Studies at Andrews University. Welcome to both of you. Great to have you here with us on Sabbath School. Thank you so much. So this is an interesting subject, uh, rest in Christ. Now, I don't know if you were wondering, as, as I've been wondering when I saw this lesson, I thought, where are we going with this? So, so what is a little bit of the history behind this rest in Christ subject that we're looking at this quarter, and how did it come into being? Well, I think the story how, how Sabbath school study guides begin is always beginning with the editor. And in this case, Clifford Goldstein walked into my office at the General Conference um, and he, about six and a half years ago, Chantal, mm -hmm. and, and he said, Gerald, I'd like you to write with Chantal on the topic of rest in Christ. I looked at him and I said, what do you mean? That's a very big topic. Maybe <laughs> a little bit your reaction that yeah. you have. And he said, you go wherever you want to go. And we did, mm -hmm. in a sense, Chantal, mm -hmm. didn't we? Mm -hmm. Well, initially when I heard of the topic, I said, oh, that's just about Sabbath. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be one or two lessons and we'll be done. But when we started studying it, I was just fascinated. I realized, wow, this touches on absolutely every aspect of our being. Mm -hmm. In the timeline of this, as you mentioned, it started about six and a half years ago or yes. so. That was when, when you and, and Clifford Goldstein began talking about it. But as, as you're, you may or may, may not be well aware, uh, the actual writing of the lesson is done quite a while prior to when we are receiving uh, this book in our hands mm -hmm. and, and beginning. So, mm -hmm. so when did the, this work begin and how did it kind of come in, into being? Well, we, we did have a deadline. Usually it's about two years that you get for that. And we started thinking about it and brainstorming about it. We actually started, we enjoyed preaching together. So we started to set a week of prayer, um, kind of set out on the topic rest in Christ. And, and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. As Chantal said, we saw all these connections to the Christian life and, and understanding of Scripture. I think you could basically, I think you could preach a, uh, an evangelistic series on the topic of rest in Christ, and you could connect to most, most ideas. Um, we wrote on this and we handed it in, I believe, about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And then it gets, there's several committees that look at it, um, theologians look at this, and then translators have to hit it. Remember, this is for the whole world church. So this is something that that people read in Kiswahili, in German, in French, in dozens, hundreds of other languages. So, so this lesson really is reaching the entire world, and it's reaching the entire world, I think, at an appropriate moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it had its genesis six and a half years ago, and then four years ago, three years ago, you handed in the manuscript. What luck! Mm. <laughs> That, that it comes into being right now. And of course, you and I, none of us believe in luck. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, God's providence brought this subject of rest in Christ into our hands in 2021, mm -hmm. which of course is coming on the heels of 2020, which is going to be a year that, that lives in infamy in, in, in human history with the coronavirus and so forth. How important do you think this subject is right now, knowing what we have been through and are to some extent continuing to go through uh, in the world right now? Well, I think at least from what I'm hearing and what I've experienced myself, it's been an anxious year. Mm. It's been a year of fear. There's you know, fear of the virus, but there's all the, the other associations, losing your job, the economy, our way of life that's mm. just been turned upside down. And I think um, if ever there's a time that we need rest, it's, it's right now. Yeah. 
I think if I can jump in, yeah. I think fear is often connected to restlessness. I mean, we, we, we don't have this point where we say, I know where I'm going. And I think that's exactly where we are with, with, with coronavirus. I mean, all around the world, it's not just one country, it's a pandemic that has affected the entire world. So I think God knew that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I mm -hmm. surely didn't write for this when we wrote it, I think, but somehow God knew that and he said, this is the message that, that I want people to read. So, so God was way, way ahead of you, way ahead of us, way, way ahead of everybody on earth, Definitely. Uh, knowing that the pandemic was going to come. And, and I think he, he knew that this was going to come at the right time mm -hmm. for, for people who needed it. So let's dive into lesson number one here uh, just a little bit. It's, we, we start off in Genesis chapter two and in Genesis chapter 2, we find an interesting passage. I'm going to go ahead and read it here and then ask a question about it. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Of course, this comes right on the heels of Genesis 1, where the creation account is, is given. And verse number 2 says, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So God creates the earth in six days. And then here on the seventh day, it says he rested. Now typically when we think about rest, we think about we're tired, we're mm. exhausted, we're beat, we're, yes. we're worn out. Mm -hmm. But that really comes as a result of sin, mm. typically. Right. You, know, you think about that, but there was no sin here and yet God rested. Mm -hmm. So why, how, why would God rest? Mm -hmm. Why would he give us a day of rest even before sin enters the picture? I think that rest here tells us something that God put something into our genes. Mm. We are made in, in his image, that's what Genesis 1 and 2 tell us and it make it very clear. And yet before sin, as you mentioned, comes in, we need a rhythm. And this rhythm has something to do with meeting God. And you know, that when we read about the, how, how people, you know, how Jesus and God visits Adam and Eve um, on the sixth day and then on the seventh day in a special time, he spends time with them. I think it tells us that somehow rest is part of our makeup, who we are. True rest. Because true rest doesn't, is not just time. It is not just a location. True rest is an attitude. Go ahead. Maybe I, I would say it's also a state of being. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you were saying, this reflection of the image of God is also modeled in God resting. And of course, we know God doesn't get tired mm -hmm. ever. And so the idea of just resting when we're tired is something foreign. Mm -hmm. It's about reflecting God's image. Mm -hmm. And it's about, as you said, an attitude, but it's also a state mm -hmm. of being rested. Mm -hmm. and, and that sounds to me better than just resting. Mm -hmm. But being rested has this, this taste of life, mm -hmm. of living life to its full. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all bound in with, with this first rest. Well, it sure does beat the situation that we find ourselves in today. Mm -hmm. sure many does. of us, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're so busy, we're so worn out, mm -hmm. uh, we're so tired from life taking its toll that we, we just look at, at rest sometimes as a chance to catch up. Mm. And, and we don't really get to enjoy everything that, that God intended for rest to be for us. You know, in uh, in both the Old and the New Testaments, mm -hmm. in, in, in Hebrew and in Greek, there are a number of words that are used to mm -hmm. describe rest. Mm -hmm. and, and you've kind of already hinted at this, uh, Chantal, about some of the, the different types of rest. What can we learn from some of these words that, that help us better understand mm -hmm. what rest can be? I think the mere fact that we have it's literally dozens of words, if you put Greek and Hebrew together, um, suggests that the topic is so important, that it's so far reaching. Um, it, this type of rest affects our physical rest, physically, health-wise. This type of rest affects our mental well-being. 
and we don't very often talk about this, but I think scripture very, you know, there's, you can find people and we're going to go in one of these lessons, we're going to look at this, um, this psychological rest, this um, mental rest. And then obviously there's the spiritual rest. I can only rest when I feel that I'm safe. Mm. I, I think, you know, in relationships, in especially relationship with God. And he tells me, come and rest in me. I, I, so um, the, the, the mere fact that there's so many terms tells me, I think if you, if you look just at quantity, you said this was an important topic for Bible authors and for, for God to communicate to this world. So there's a, there's a theme then of rest that is, that is running throughout the Bible, whether we're looking at Old Testament or New Testament, dozens of different words that are used to describe rest. And God introduces us to this, to this concept back at the beginning, mm -hmm. back in Genesis chapter two. So in Genesis one, everything looks great. In fact, well, it looks good if we want to use the yes. correct biblical yes. term. Yes. And then in Genesis two, things continue to look, well, pretty good. But, but then we get to Genesis chapter three and things take a decided turn less good. Mm -hmm. That's terrible English, but yes. I think it gets the idea across. <laughs> So we get to Genesis chapter three and, and sin enters the picture. So how do you think this, this idea of rest that God established in, in Genesis chapter two, this, this idea that, that goes through scripture, how, did, how does it help us to, to deal with the sin problem? Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it, it's, it's it is the solution mm -hmm. to the sin problem. It encapsulates everything that we normally speak of in, in separate terms, you know, salvation, faith, uh, trusting in God, uh, the ultimate solution, you know, the second coming, Jesus coming, the earth being made new. It, it, it encapsulates everything, this concept of rest. Uh, that's, yeah, that's the answer to the sin problem. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine, you know, it's interesting that if you look at Genesis chapter 4, which come, follows, right, I mean, they're now outside um, the Garden of Eden, and you recognize there's Cain and there's a first death, I mean, mm. there's a murder, and he's described as being restless. He is, you know, the, he's running away, trying to hide, and being restless. Mm. I think we get a hint already there that different, you know, apart from God, separated from God, there is restlessness. That's mm -hmm. the result of mm. sin. But only when we come back to him, when we find grace and forgiveness, mm -hmm. and that's the plan of salvation that is introduced in Genesis chapter three, there is rest. Mm -hmm. So we have this, this knowledge now that rest existed before sin. God knew that sin was going to come in, and he's helped us to be able to, pre to be prepared for it. We're going to dig into that in more depth in just a moment, but I want to encourage you, if you have not already done so, make sure that you pick up the companion book to this quarter's Bible study lesson. It is entitled Rest in Christ by Gerald and Chantal Klingbeil. You can pick that up at the It Is Written store at itiswritten.shop you will gain a lot from this companion book that builds on the ideas that are in the lesson study, but goes into a lot more depth as well. We're going to be back in just a moment as we continue looking at rest in Christ. We'll see you in just a moment. Thank you for remembering that It Is Written exists because of the kindness of people just like you. To support this international life-changing ministry, please call us now at 800-253-3000. You can send your tax-deductible gift to the address on your screen, or you can visit us online at itiswritten.com. Thank you for your prayers and for your financial support. Our number again is 800-253-3000, or you can visit us online at itiswritten.com. Welcome back to Sabbath School, brought to you by It Is Written. We are here with the authors, again, of this quarter study, Gerald and Chantal Klingbeil, and we're looking at rest in Christ. Now, we've, we've looked a little bit at how rest finds itself through the scriptures. God has mm -hmm. placed it in there. Mm -hmm. But I want to take a look at several examples, starting here with John 10 and verse number 10. 
Uh, rest, of course, was something that was very familiar to Jesus. And in John 10, verse number 10, he says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So here, God wants us to have mm -hmm. life, but abundant life. Mm -hmm. What role does rest play mm -hmm. in having an abundant life? As we, as we spoke earlier, it's this, this throwback, I believe, to Eden, this full life that, that God wants us to have. It doesn't specifically say rest in this particular verse, but it's speaking of this fullness of life. It's not a minus, it's a plus mm -hmm. rest. Connecting to this, I, I think the rest, the abundant life that, that John writes to us, Jesus speaks in, in the Gospel of John, is a reference to people who have experienced rest. Only when I am, have given away what burdens me, only when I am, you know, have taken out of my life the things that distract me, can I find abundant life. And it's only through rest that, that it comes. And there are many ways, you know, obviously there's a time, there's a location of rest, but in this, this I think John chapter 10, 10 describes for us the results of, of what it does it mean when we find this rest. Now Jesus has, has other, other references where he tells his disciples specifically, you need to rest. Mm. And, and we, talk, we will talk about this more. But, but here I think it's describing the, the result. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when we talk about having life and having it more abundantly today, mm -hmm. most people think that to have an abundant life, you got to have stuff mm -hmm. and things and money and, and be successful to have mm -hmm. an abundant life. But if you stop and think about it, many times the people who have all the stuff mm. also have more problems. Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe having more stuff and more things and being more busy and having uh, the better job and the better income and the the notoriety and the, and the success and, and so forth, maybe that's not what abundant life is all about. Mm. So rest can help even those people and maybe they even need more help in mm. those that department than, mm -hmm. than others. What can rest provide mm -hmm. that our current understanding of what success mm. and and abundance is lacking? Well, I, I think what has at least turned a, a, a spotlight on this issue has been the COVID crisis. Mm. A lot of people were housebound for a long time or apartment bound. And I think they discovered that their stuff, uh, they got tired of it. Mm. And it, they had time to sleep all day if they wanted to. They had, you know, all the electronics at at their fingertips. Entertainment. Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And yet there was a deep sense of loss, of restlessness, anxiety, depression. It just went through the roof. So I think it really shook our, shook our understanding of getting more stuff, um, mm -hmm. getting a big, good job. Mm. Uh, we began to realize that rest has something to do with relationships mm. and connectedness, mm -hmm. not stuff. And this, of course, Jesus is talking about a long, long time ago. I think this sense of connectedness is, helps us to understand that rest is not about, as Chantal said, not about things. And you mentioned that, you know, that people, millionaires, billionaires, whatever, they have everything, it seems, and yet they feel restless. You know, if you read stories about their lives, you, f you see you see restlessness, you see hurt, you see pain. Now, if you go into, if you would like to earn lots of money, you offer a seminar on rest, finding rest, because mm. we are 24 seven, we are so busy and you could earn a lot of money, I think. I mean, we've, <laughs> we, we, when we looked around, there's, there's these incredibly highly priced seminars and um, that people offer so that we can learn with all our success, with all our money, with all our things we have, that we can learn how to rest. I, th I think scripture is spot on mm. that kind of diagnosing, but also offering us the solution that rest is not in a seminar, rest is not in a technique or mm. self-improvement, rest is, as Chantal said, um, relational. 
you know, and, and that's what God is all about. He's about having relationships with us. He, he wants to have relationships with us, and relationships are, are based on time. Mm. You cannot have a relationship with somebody without spending time with them. And what was kind of interesting in, in this pandemic, at least at the mm. beginning, mm -hmm. there was a lot of discomfort because people were being forced to spend time with one another that yes. they hadn't previously spent time mm -hmm. together uh, with one another. But God wants us to spend time with him, and he wants us to have quality relationships with one another. You know, over in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 6, in verse number 31, I'm going to read verse 30 just for a little bit of, uh, of, of context, but then come down into verse 31, and we're going to take a look at what Jesus said here again, because it's, it's always great to see what Jesus has to say on a subject. You can't go wrong with that. In Mark 6, verses 30 and 31, it says, Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him, all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. Wow, that sounds like today. Mm. I mean, if, you were to, if you were to take Jesus out of that passage and just, mm -hmm. you know, put it in today's, in an article about today, that sounds like today. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was way ahead of us uh, yes. on this. Talk with me a little bit about what, what Jesus knew that we need to know. I find it unique because if you, if you look at the Bible text in John chapter 6, there's a connection to verses 12 and 13. That's when Jesus sends out the disciples and says, Yo, I want you to go out two by two and you want you to preach, to proclaim the kingdom of God. And they also do much more. They drive out demons, they, they heal the sick, and they come back and they're all excited, but there's this crowd. Mm. So he knows that they need to debrief. He knows that they need this rest, and yet there are, there's a job to be done. Mm. So uh, unfortunately, we only come to the solution of when they find their rest after this miracle of the feeding, but Jesus knows that true rest requires also checking in with him. Mm. If, if, if I may say that, maybe it sounds a little bit too, too familiar. Checking him with him, telling him what I've experienced, what my burdens, my challenges, but also maybe my, my joys. And perhaps one of, or a great danger that we face when we have given our lives to Jesus is busyness, mm -hmm. also in good stuff. Mm. And that we, uh, our work becomes our salvation. We, we're so busy doing good things for God that we don't spend time with God. And this, I think, is a, a call, a warning call. We need that. Even when we're doing good stuff, mm -hmm. we, we still need that quality time with Jesus. It, it, it's interesting, if I may, yes, uh, Eric. It's interesting that he wants them not to be in a busy place. Mm. There's, there's also locations. It's not just a moment come aside, but it's go to a deserted place. My version says mm. it's, it's a wilderness. It's a place where there is not much distraction and we are faced. We're living in a time of full distractions. Constant. I mean, mm -hmm. our, our, our smart watches, our smartphones, our computers. Our, we get connected all the time and pinged and and it really disturbs us. I think if we don't have these moments to to rest, to find a connection to the one who can only give us reprieve, who, mm. can, who can give us refreshment. That's why I think the Sabbath, and we're going to talk about the Sabbath in, this, in the Sabbath School uh, st study guide also, the Sabbath is so significant. Yeah, we, we look at, at our lives today and we are, we are very connected. Mm. Uh, as, as you mentioned, we've, we've got our smartwatches and our smartphones and our, our our laptops. We used to just have a desktop computer, but then we could take the desktop with us. We used to have a phone that was attached to the wall, but now we can take our phones with us. So we, we, can, be, we can be busy without even thinking about it today. We are, we are almost constantly accessible to everyone. And, and yet God says, it's going to cause problems. Now, th this is not me trying to take away your cell phone or your smartwatch or, or anything like that. It's just an awareness of the world in which we happen to live. And, and this didn't catch God by surprise. He knew that we would be restless. Yes. You know, everything that we have doesn't make our lives that much better, maybe easier. One could make an argument one way or the other. But 
by and large, people are still restless. You know, I, I, we mentioned a, a moment or two ago about Cain mm -hmm. being restless, and mm -hmm. we're going to be looking at that in our, in our next lesson. Give us a little teaser about where we're going in, our, in next week's lesson on the idea of restlessness, uh, separation from God, and, and so forth. I think, if I may, Chantal, mm -hmm. if I start, I think restlessness lies right at the root, you know, of, of se separation. There's a, mm. there's a direct link between sin and restlessness. And that's what the story of Cain illustrates. You know, he is the first murderer. He is the first one who pushes, for, of the children, I mean, of, of Adam and Eve, who pushes God aside and says, I can do it on my own way. And he's restless. He's described as, as a restless wanderer mm. over the face of the earth. I mean, can you imagine that? And, and I, I assume the earth was fairly empty at that, at, at that yeah. moment. Restlessness, we, we'll see, and we see it with Cain, um, it's, it's the fever that mm. we develop. It's not necessarily the sickness, mm -hmm. but it's a symptom of the sickness. So now if we're looking for solutions, we don't just want to take something to stop the fever. We want to go deep and we want to find out what's causing the restlessness. Mm -hmm. And that's where we will be going. Uh, we'll be doing some hot digging to, to find out what causes our restlessness. Mm -hmm. Besides separation from God, there's other things that grow in the heart that cause this restlessness. Mm -hmm. All right, so where do we find a solution to this restlessness? That's where we're going this quarter. This is lesson number one. We've got 12 lessons left to go, and we're going to be unpacking this idea of rest. And of course, we are going to be doing that with the authors of this Sabbath school lesson, uh, Gerald and Chantal Klingbeil. And we're grateful that you could join us today, and we're looking forward to the remainder of our uh, 13 weeks together, and we're looking forward to having you join us as well, because Sabbath school would not be the same if you weren't a part of it. So we're going to keep digging into rest in Christ, and again, I want to encourage you, if you haven't stopped by the It Is Written uh, website, itiswritten.shop, make sure that you pick up the companion book to this quarter's lesson, Rest in Christ. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.